we're going to talk a little bit about the efforts up on Beacon Hill. You're no stranger to Somerville Community Access Television, Somerville Media Center. You both appeared multiple times, so I can think of no better advocates to say how important community media is. Why don't we start with Representative Barber. Your efforts on the Hill, I've been watching lately, a lot has to do with education and youth initiatives. You want to take it away for a little bit? Um, sure. So there's a lot happening on Beacon Hill, um, especially around education. And I'm sure Denise and I can both talk about what we're doing there. Um, but I, I do want to um, highlight something that I've worked on actually inspired by and informed by the, the public students public school students from Somerville, which is a menstrual equity access bill. So a few years ago, I think it was 2017, the Somerville High School students organized and they did a video and some actions to talk about um, getting menstrual products put in all the restrooms so students didn't have to go to the nurse's office and miss class um, to find products that are a basic need. And because of this, this was a successful campaign in Somerville, um, Senator Jalen and I actually filed a bill to ensure menstrual products are in all schools as well as homeless shelters and prisons. Um, so it was really a, a, something that you know inspired and was it came up from the students, so I'm proud to be working on that. Uh, separately, we in the House are going to be voting on education funding this week. Um, it was passed in the Senate a couple weeks ago. Um, it's, a, it's a complex bill. It's a really important bill um, and will, I think, really help with better funding for low-income students, ELL, special education, a lot of funds that um, have, have uh, lapsed and are needed for equity. And that's all an initiative, I would assume, that most municipalities are going to be behind. Uh, yes, I assume so. Yeah. Denise Provo, longtime supporter of Somerville Community Access Television now, our umbrella name, Somerville Media Center. Yes. I want to thank you publicly again for all the years that you've supported us by coming to our annual meetings, our awards programs, the way that you utilize our station. Represent I should say Representative Barber lives in... Medford now, yeah. still Somerville now, but you appear a lot on Medford Channel, right? Because the uh, uh, vast majority of your district is in Medford. It's split, Medford it's and split. Somerville. Yeah, but Representative Provo, you never knew we were going to be able to be doing live telecasts from all over the city. Well, the Somerville Media Center has grown up in a lot of ways, become a lot more technically sophisticated and has developed more ways of communicating with the public. And, you know, one of the reasons I, the, the fundamental reason I support community media so profoundly is that the First Amendment freedom of speech and of the press do not mean much if all of the press is shrunken and controlled by big corporations and there are no channels for all voices to be heard. That, you know, that's an excellent point because we have several forums coming up and talking about the smaller municipalities or even the bigger cities like Medford and Somerville are that quickly becoming almost like the coin, coining a phrase, news deserts. Because of what's happening in this speed in which news is now put out to the public, what's happening is that more and more people are depending on the internet. And as you know, let me, coin a, let me use a phrase, fake news is out there all over the place. As a result of that, when it comes down to local issues, the local folks suffer from that because there is no trusted news source to go to. So let me, let me ask you a couple of questions when it comes to news these days. How do you get your local news about what's happening in Somerville or what's happening in Medford? Do you want to go first? No. Uh, well, um, actually and oddly, one source that I have into stories that I might not otherwise see because they're, they're very specific and local is the patch. Who would have thought? Although, you know, I, as far as I know, the after the patch got rid of its last editor, it no longer has an editor. So who is curating the news? I do not know. Um, but a lot of 
a lot of this is is stories, quality of life stories, you might say, about um, the safety of the roads, public safety, um, weather-related events, things that, that affect our constituency, which we should know about. Um, the, you know, the... The Globe is, an, is a shrunken newspaper. It, it purports to be statewide. It covers Boston to some extent, but it, you know, it went from a little bit of local coverage to basically no coverage at all. Um, I rely a lot on news digests that I get in my email, the master list Politico, that are um, excerpts from stories that give me links. Sometimes I bump into a paywall, sometimes not. But Otherwise, I don't know how people in one community find out what's going on in other communities because not only has local news shrunk, but there are not good pathways to learn what's going on in other places. Mm. Christine Barber, I think you still have two community newspapers over there, don't I you? I do, yes. Yeah. So I, um, besides the Somerville Media Center, which is a great place for a local She news, caught it. So, she caught yeah, where yeah, I was yeah, going yeah, with that, with Denise. That. And, for, and for different voices who might be shut out of the, the process, um, especially when it's run by corporate media. Um, but yes, the journal and the transcript in Somerville and Medford still have some intrepid reporters who work hard to bring us the local stories and I think work with uh, the Somerville, Somerville Media Center. Um, and it's really necessary because the Globe, yes, used to do a little bit of local news, but really does not anymore. So I'm thankful that we have, I think it's reporters who work really hard to bring the news um, for kind of a, um, you know, hobbled local news structure. So it's so important in these times to do that. So, you know, just to update, I mean, the general public is going to watch this. It's live, but we're also taping and we'll, we'll keep showing this. The general public often asks me, you know, what does the Somerville Media Center do besides have Somerville Community Access Television, SCAD TV? And there's a lot of things that we do. We are a news source. Um, we've recently made the effort through the board of directors. We've made the effort to go ahead and jumpstart Som Somerville Neighborhood News again. Uh, that was originally proposed to us by Jane Regan, who is a journalist. Um, Jane Regan left for a little bit, and she did some teaching stints at universities. She is now back with us, jumpstarting Somerville Neighborhood News. We work collaboratively with the Somerville Journal, with Binge, with Dig Boston, with the Somerville Times, Somerville News Weekly, Patch. We are um, citizen journalists, I guess, mm -hmm. on Patch, where you can access and post. So we're trying our best, but we think, in the way that Jane has this laid out for us, um, we think we are going to become one of the premier news sources in the city. We hope to do it. Of course, that always comes down to funding, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, about how we propose to keep going as a vital entity in the city. But it's interesting when you talk about the cross-pollinization of news, because there's so much that happens on the local level that affects all our municipalities, yes. statewide that affects all the municipalities, and you could get a slanted view when it comes to who's the reporter reporting that issue. So let me ask you this question. When you have a topic that's hotly debated up on Beacon Hill, who is your go-to to try to get the accurate, factual information out? I know that you have State House News mm -hmm. Service. You also have a couple of intrepid Beacon Hill reporters. Um, don't get yourselves in trouble, but talk about how you, c not manipulate the news, but how do you disseminate that, other than your own uh, websites or newsletters? Uh, one publication that's all online now, they've stopped doing print, that is worth reading for people who are interested in knowing what's going on in state government is Commonwealth Magazine, um, which does excellent, high-quality reporting. Um, a, a lot of the pieces are short, you know, mm -hmm. very readable, um, and sometimes in-depth reporting. Um, it's found easily online, but they, you know, they, they cover, for instance, public transportation um, very deeply and thoughtfully. Uh, they take a 
opinion pieces from a variety of sources. Um, I think you and I have both had pieces published in Commonwealth. And uh, am I correct in saying that one of their intrepid reporters is a former Somervillian? So Indeed. A few of them are, actually. Yeah. There's a, Adam there's Vaccaro, a few. is he still with them? Um, Andy I'm Metzger. Andy, Andy Metz. And Sarah Betancourt. And who's Sarah Betancourt. There. She's there working right. on immigration. So there's the importance of media here in mm -hmm. Somerville is that we train a lot of these inter oh, intrepid yeah. reporters and they move on. Yeah, they're very good. Yeah. Hilary Chabot went on Hillary to the Chabot. Herald. Yeah. And um, I, Danielle McLean mm -hmm. went to Maine. She's in Portland, I, yeah. Maine. Yeah, we did see that. Yeah. How about over in Medford? Are you, are you getting... Um, calls for more and more local news through the media center that you have over there? Yes, I mean, I think there is definitely a movement towards more local news in Medford. Um, and uh, Medford had uh, an additional uh, news source that um, went under a few years ago, so the transcript is, is what we have. So there is definitely an, a, a move for more um, cable access and, and media work there. Um, and on the state level, I agree that there's sometimes a vacuum of there's local news, federal news, but it's hard to find the state level news as it impacts our communities. Um, and I agree, Commonwealth Magazine's a great resource. Also, uh, WBUR and GBH have very good uh, state house reporters and, and reporters who have focused on particular state policies. And Let me give the shout out to another yeah. connection, which is uh, one of their executive producers, Mark Naven right. at WBUR. Mm -hmm. He's a very good friend of mine. So we do the cross feed yeah. when, yeah. So I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, and here's the ultimate reason for both of you being here, at, and thank you again, the importance of something like Somerville Media Center to be a freedom of speech, a center for freedom of speech. B, we train the next generation of telecommunications folks or television folks or radio folks. A lot of people ask me every day, they say, you guys have a radio station down there. We do. It's called Boston Free Radio. We're jump starting, as I mentioned, the news division again. So we will be television, radio, and news. Hopefully, through um, publicizing, you know, through Community Media Week, people begin to understand how important we are to the local community. Our education, um, we do business with a lot of the not-for-profit entities across the city who deal with youth issues. Um, we have television programs that deal with a lot of the topics of the day. The opioid epidemic is so beautifully handled by Joanne Ravicchio in her show, um, Race is being handled, race issues are being handled by Diane Wong and her show. Um, I still have this, the old staple of Greater Somerville talking about politics. Um, we do a lot of coverage of events in the city. So I'm blowing my own horn here, but I want kind of from your perspective, Denise, you were appearing on cable television long before any of us through when you were an alderman at large in the city of Somerville? Even before that, you know, the first time I ran for ward alderman back in 1993 um, against an incumbent who I should have known better than to challenge. Uh, well, so said that person. Well, so said a lot of people. But the uh, SCAT TV, or um, as it was at the time, invited every candidate in every race to come in and tape a short message, which was a great equalizer. You know, it enabled me to get myself, introduce myself and get my message out to the same audience as every other candidate. And I thought, wow, <laughs> uh, you know, this, the existence of such a community resource has unlimited potential and really does actualize you know the concept of of a marketplace of ideas of of the free exchange of uh ideas even if they are not approved by official uh sources of authority and christine i know that i, I can't remember Exactly, but I think the first time that you came in to do a pre-recorded message, 
Was it you were running for state rep the first time? I did. The first time I was on, again, it was SCAT at the time, was when I was running for alderman in 2011. Ward 4. For Ward 4. And I have this distinct memory. I, I, of course, it was a great opportunity, but when it was aired, that a bunch of my neighbors ran over and knocked on my door to tell me that I was on TV and how <laughs> excited they were. And wanted to, to know who TV. that handsome guy right. was that yeah, was interviewing that was exactly, you. Exactly. Exactly. That's totally what happened. And I gave them Shameless all your number. plug. Yeah. Shameless <laughs> plug. Yeah. Um, but so it is. It is a great opportunity. Obviously, people watch it as as I um, found that night, as others um, ran to tell me that they saw me. But um, I think more so is that you know I had watched um, the shows for a long time, and it was a way that I one got to know what was going on in the city, but also got to hear different voices. Um, and you know now it's great as if you you know diving into specific issues like immigration. I know you've covered a lot with the Welcome Project and other uh, voices coming on and talking about things that aren't covered in a lot of mainstream news and um, and you know issues that kind of bubble up. Like I was talking about the the high school students and the menstrual access, like giving voice to some of the grassroots. Uh, movements so other so we can all learn about them so you know I can learn about them or other elected officials can learn about what's going on in our city yeah I do want to give a plug to a lot of the not-for-profit agencies in the city that bring story ideas to us and we are so grateful to folks like um, Ben Echevarria at the Welcome Project and um, uh, Jessica Braden at Respond for Domestic Violence I mean all and I should say Scott Post at um, youth, the Youth Empowerment folks. They bring us story ideas, and we are so grateful to have folks bringing us ideas about what's happening in their community. We also plan, uh, going forward, to start a, a huge initiative for fundraising for the Somerville Media Center, primarily because this is how I kind of want to weave into what's happening um, to us and to Medford Television and to Cambridge and right across the nation, is that the Trump administration decimated the FCC chairmanship, um, so much so that there are three Republican chairmen left and only one Democrat, which you are both politicians, you both understand how the voting will go on that. So in uh, August, September, they voted to defund basically all of media centers across the United States. So it's not just Somerville, it's not Medford, it's everyone. Um, there are multiple efforts ongoing to try to defeat what the FCC has done. Um, it is my opinion that we cannot wait for that defeat. We have to find other avenues of funding. So we have met uh, locally with the city. I've spoken to the um, Muccini Burke administration over in Medford, spoken to the folks at Cambridge. We are trying to figure out how to keep ourselves alive. Basically, so you know, part of our lunch cast is to make sure people understand the importance of community media, um, and to ask for their support so that we can continue going. We're taking the model of PBS. You know, just we're going to go looking for our funding at every source. From the state level, has there been any discussion? I know that both of you are very good supporters of what we've asked you to do in terms of sending letters in and opposition to what the FCC is doing. State, um, State Senator Pat Jalen, Representative Conley, Rep, um, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, Senator Markey, everybody's doing their thing. However, is the, from a state level, has there been any discussion on how the governor or the legislature would propose to keep media access centers going? I, there have been some bills filed, including one that would preserve net neutrality in the states. And there's been a court decision that says it's okay to do that. I think uh, California provided the test they did. case. So, so there, there, are, there are efforts to find within the, un, within the, what might be seen as a stranglehold of federal preemption, some little areas of discretionary space where states can adopt their own laws regarding communications fee schedules etc exactly uh, i mean let's i'll call it what it is it could be a local tax put on cable providers to make up that shortfall from what the trump administration is doing 
Exactly, because it's it's no coincidence or accident that the Trump administration uh, wants to starve independent media and um, reinforce the near monopoly of corporate media. Yeah, I, I, I can say it, and this is probably the reason why the Trump administration wants to get rid of us, is because we are a free speech entity. We're not controlled by government. We're not controlled by the cities in which we operate. There are some models that are a little different than what Somerville is, where there is a distinct firewall in between Somerville Media Center and the government channel and the mayor's office and the city council in Somerville. There's a very clear line. In all the years that I've been associated, they have never once stepped over that line. So we like this model of being independent. The Trump administration does not like that model. They would prefer everyone act as Fox News acts. So, you know, I'm going to ask publicly for your support when it comes to bills that are in front of the mass state legislature. I know you're shaking your head. I know, but I'm going to do the ask publicly that you support us, help us keep going, help us deliver the products that we deliver to not only now Somerville, but because of the web, our products are seen all over the globe. Okay. We get a lot of recognition about the, the product that we produce. We want to continue doing that, and we do need political support. So I'm going to ask the producer one more time, how are we doing on time? We have five minutes left. Say it again. Okay, so we have five minutes left. Okay. Let me turn it back over to both of you and talk about some of the initiatives that you would love to see local media cover. You've, I know you've said that you have some great friends at Commonwealth Magazine and that it's good, but is there something that the local folks can do to help elected officials on Beacon Hill get their word out? Uh, well, you do it by virtue of asking us what we're working on, inviting us on to Greater Somerville to talk in depth about some of those initiatives. I think that helps. Um, you know, I've, I've often thought about uh, figuring out how to use my non-existence free time to access Boston <laughs> Free Radio, um, which I think is, you know, is a tremendous way to reach an audience. Um, it has a great catchy name already, ready it for does. it. You know? it Provost does. Provost Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. We trademark that, though. Oh. Trademark it. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for, thanks for the good advice. How about you? Um, I think, well, Somerville is such a leader in so many areas and we do we know Somerville has you know the best ideas and a lot of good ideas come from here so I'm thinking of Christine you know we're going to put this out on Medford TV okay. too you know? well Medford also has very good <laughs> ideas um, but I'm thinking about things like the youth voting so the right. Somerville uh, City Council passed the um, six, allowing 16 and 17 year olds to vote in municipal elections that needs state approval. Um, so it's a home rule that we, the whole delegation is supporting. It will be a fight through the state house though. Not everyone supports youth voting. Um, but you know, getting, so getting the voices of youth who have done a, a, a great job organizing here in the city, but we need support statewide. So that sort of getting the, the good ideas from here out to the wider audience can help us too, because we have to convince, um, a lot of other folks to sure. get on board with what Somerville is working on. Yeah, Denise. I, I was just thinking about how instrumental the organized group of Somerville High School students were in getting the red flag so-called legislation passed so that gun licenses can be temporarily suspended from individuals who are um, talking or behaving in a way that makes their loved ones think they might be suicidal or, or possibly inclined to do harm to others. Um, you know, that, that law passed relatively quickly and I think would not have done so but for the groundswell of support that started with our young people here. Yes, yeah, students in Somerville and in Medford were, were really organized and marched to the state house on a, a 
a snow day. Um, and I think that bill would not have ha passed um, without without that huge support. So getting stories out like the local activism is really important for the rest of the state, too. It gives, you know, it does give me great hope when I, uh, I'm down at the media center maybe two, three times a week, and it gives me great hope that this next generation understands the importance of their future better than some adults do. That's not a phrase that I use. I just came up with it, but it is something that gives me hope about the youth that I see participating in things down at the media center. They came to us and said, here are the issues we, we're concerned about. We need your voice, meaning the media center's voice, in order to get this out there. And I was very happy to do and to support um, lowering the voting age in municipal elections. And I had, um, th I think I had three or four of the high school students on Greater Somerville explaining why it was so important to them. Why would you organize around this? It's another thing for you to do, you know? And they were very articulate, very clear, and very, very passionate about why they were gonna continue fighting with it. Yeah, and when you see, I mean, like the climate strike and, you know, the number of things that young people are, are scared about in their, it's their future, so it really, um, it really drives home the point of why it's so important. It is their future. It's our future at the media center, and it's our duty to make sure they have a voice. So um, we're going to sign off on this lunch cast. I was told to say it is lunch cast. Thank you so much, um, State Representative Denise Provo, State Representative Christine Barber, for helping us kick off Community Media Week here at the Somerville Media Center. Any, any parting words for the general public? Well... If we had more time, yes, but for now I'll just say um, go Community Media Center and count on me yeah. for my support. Yeah, At times like these we need things like the Somerville Media Center, so thank you for your work. Great. For Somerville Media Center, kicking off Somerville Community Media Week, I'm Joe Lynch. Thanks for watching. See you next time.